Laura, what a beautiful old tune. Hey, Andy, again. Bessie doesn't like it, so it must be loud. Um, <laughs> welcome to my life. Burn of birds on the bat, of course, as you can see. Of course, watching Cardinals lose a spring training game. 2 nothing right now. So, that's just spring training, right? Who cares? Uh, nice to see baseball, though, right? Nice that those guys figured their little bad little selves out. Little millionaire selves out. Ah, uh, I want to talk about different aspects of lead playing. Lead trumpet playing, if you will. Okay. The number one thing that I grab onto when I hear anybody playing lead trumpet is just their overall sense of presence. Command. Um, I certainly talked at length about Gazzo, Conrad Gazzo. That generation of studio musicians back in, you know, say 50s, 60s, it was a kind of a golden era, if you will. And man, those guys just were just melting the solder on the horns, you know, just really blowing. It's a little different game now. It's a different, different thing. Um, but that sense of command and presence is just what will get me going to find more recordings by that group or that person, okay? Uh, you know, Gazo, obviously a big one um, for me. Um, think about uh, Lady is a Tramp, right? That lick got me hired for some other gig. I played that lick for a certain conductor. I don't want to get into names or anything, but he hired me on the spot for some other stuff because he heard me play that. Just, you know, that was the first chart on the first chart out of the shoot. And can, he heard that and said, okay. Um, said, catch me a break. If we were done rehearsing that tune, <laughs> got me a break. And he hired me for some other stuff. So. Um, you only get one chance to make a first impression, right? Well, make sure you bring your A game when those opportunities arise. Uh, but what it gets, this gets to what I want to talk to primarily, um, is this, this whole thing of maybe my favorite aspect of lead playing. Okay. What comes, brings me back to, to it more than anything is just being able to just command a piece of music, right? Not just play the notes. Well, the thing is, though, in order to play with that level of sort of command and presence, you need a lot of confidence, okay? You need a great deal of confidence knowing the note you're going for is really going to be right there. You know, one of the hardest things we do as trumpet players is try to play accurately. You know, accuracy is something we all struggle with. Um, so... Before we get into the whole thing of command and presence and that sort of thing, um, <clears throat> need to talk about, kind of boil it away, talk about the root issue, really, which is accuracy. Um, so what do we, what, where do we go from there? Well, to me, accuracy, trumpet accuracy, being an accurate player, there are two big things going on, Okay. First one, to me, is muscle memory, okay? Muscle, you probably heard the term. It, you hear it a lot in sports world, right, with free throws. Michael Jordan shot how many tens of thousands of free throws, right? That muscle memory of shooting a free throw. Um, so, probably familiar with muscle memory as a, you know, concept. And it certainly applies with trumpet playing, okay? Um, so, just to take it for a moment, just by itself, muscle memory refers to knowing what every note, every single note on this beast has its own separate feel. Some people call it a slot. Um, I just like to think of it in terms of, well, what does that note feel like? You know, what is every sensation of, you know, how much are the corners clenched? How much, you know, what's the exact positioning? Take an easy note 
like, uh, well, let's take D, okay? That was the first note of the Ladies of the Tramp lick, only up an octave. But let's take um, a fourth line D, okay? And if I set up for that note, okay? But don't play it, all right? You could do this on any any note. But just pick one, okay? And what I like to do is just set up so, okay, reproduce. What does that note feel like here, everywhere, right? The whole setup. Don't play the note, but just go from memory. What does that note feel like? Okay, then boom, right? Um, the other piece of the puzzle is your ears, okay? So muscle memory, big, important component of uh, playing accurately. And we'll talk about a couple exercises in a minute uh, that can help with this sort of thing. But uh, the other thing is ears. Okay, your ears. We have a whole other aspect that we need to include as musicians, right? It's one thing to, if you're a baseball player, you know, take 5,000 ground balls or, you know, basketball player shoot, you know, 15,000 free throws, okay? Uh, we need repetitions and, you know, which is what builds up that muscle memory, right? Um, but we also need to use our ears. If you see a note on a piece of music, you need to have some degree of associa association of sound with, okay, when I see a D on the fourth line, right? Um, if I have no clue what sound is supposed to come out based upon that, well, I'm gonna, you're gonna have a real problem there, right? Um, and you have to start somewhere, okay? If you have no clue, say if you saw a D on fourth line of music, okay? And you had no clue whatsoever what that pitch is supposed to sound like. Well, you know, there's things you can do. You can use a tuner that, you know, one of those that t gives you the pitch that you're, you're playing. Or a keyboard, okay? Uh, play the note on keyboard and then, you know, play it on trumpet. Just, you have to make that, that association, if you will. See the note and hear it in your head, okay? All along, feeling that note here, right, on your chops. So, if I take our note again, I don't know why I picked D of all notes, but whatever. Um, you could do it on any pitch, like I said. So this, if I'm hearing it... Mm, sorry for my bad... <laughs> My bad singing. Mm -hmm. You can do it on any note, okay? Um, how about uh, B flat, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Now, I've been doing this for a minute <laughs> or two or 30 years. So the associations for me are built up pretty strongly. I see a note on the page. I don't have perfect pitch, but I have very strong relative pitch. Okay, I see a note on a piece of paper. I have a sound associated with that pitch in my head when I see it. Okay, uh, this is part of what helps, a big part of what helps with your overall accuracy as a trumpet player. That and the other piece of the puzzle being the mechanics of it, right? The mechanical part, what I like to call nuts and bolts. <coughs> Excuse me. What does that note feel like? And you know, it's okay to think mechanically sometimes. That is okay. We all are musicians. We try, you know, if we're endeavoring to play an instrument, right? We, I certainly consider myself a musician. I don't call myself a trumpet player so much as I call myself a musician, okay? But it's okay, especially in the case of this nasty thing, this nasty, you know, beast of an instrument, it's okay to think mechanically sometimes. How much air? What's the tongue doing? Where, you know, how tight are the corners? What about the, what's the jaw doing? All of that crap, right? All of that stuff, which the longer you play, um, the more that improves, Okay, uh, I wish I could tell you there's a shortcut. Uh, you know, I wish there was a shortcut. 
like in the Matrix when they download how to fly a helicopter, right? Okay, how do I play accurately as a trumpet player? Boom, right? Uh, not to be, c'est la vie. Um, so, um, a couple exercises you can do that help this sort of thing, that help work directly on your accuracy, okay, as a trumpet player. Um, <clears throat> I think it helps to play all sorts of studies across different octaves. I have some in my book. I've talked about this before. This guy. What? Trumpet mania. And I have a study in here. Um, hey, look who that is. Or Sonny. He's being a very good boy. Yes, he's being a very good boy. Um, he doesn't remotely care about being an accurate trumpet player. He just could care less. His standards have really slipped. Okay, I have a chapter. I have different chapters in my book. And I have one on accuracy, where I talk about this very thing. Playing accurately. Uh, muscles uh, and ears. Muscles and ears. Um, and I have a couple of studies in here that are meant to address, work on your overall accuracy. Um, and I have one in here that I was going to play a little lick from. Um, I have a bunch of series of studies in here called control studies. And so a lot of them are slurred. Hey, the cards are up 3-2. <laughs> I missed it. Um, it's just nice to have baseball on, right? I don't need to sound. I just have it on, and it's just I just love it. So I just have it on. Love it. Anyway, fifth advanced control study I have in here, and it combines tonguing and slurring. Okay, it's not just slur a slurring study. Um, you have to think in this study. It's all based on open fifths, okay? The interval of a perfect fifth, okay? And... It's written with some dynamic contrast in it. And it's written two ways. You tongue the study, and then you slur the study. Okay? So, let me try to give you an example here. Of, uh, let's pick a good line here. I'm looking at it here. Okay. Uh, I'll do the one that starts on B-flat, because I, I had this one in mind, because it has that D on it. Only it's the D, again, from that, <clears throat> excuse me, first note of the Lady is a Tramp lick. Starts on a D. Okay? Um... To be able to play that, my goal, to get to where I can play that um, with absolute confidence and accuracy and command, right, is, you know, I have to know where the hell that note lives, right? And also what it sounds like. So that's what, that's the whole point of today's video. This study can help you, okay, it's helped me. Here's one that starts on B flat and again, open fifth. If you need a breath between the notes, you can. But it's important to run the notes together. Okay? In other words, don't give yourself a big gap between them. Try to run one note into the next. Piece of cake plays itself, plays itself. Um, that's what my dad used to say about tunes that went down easy. Plays itself, <laughs> not so much in this case. Um, excuse me, got some water trapped here somewhere. Um, sounds like bathtub horn, anyway. So, that's the kind of study you can do, uh, to work on this. Okay, I'm thinking, where is every no, what's the change from note to note to note as I'm going up, as I'm descending? Okay, and I'm not 100%. I'm not sitting here saying, okay, and I'm yeah, I'm, I'm still working, right? Speaking, by the way, got uh, finally saw my orthopedic doctor, got a 
big old cortisone shot, and it's helping, man. Things are not 100% here on the right side. They're not 100%. I would call them 80, maybe, 80, 85. Feels pretty good. I played some Clark Technical studies. The uh, um, the fifth Clark Technical, my favorite one. <laughs> feels okay right feel it's like damn i haven't felt like that in a lot of years i used i've always just so used to having pain hands wrists you know so god willing this cortisone treatments are going to continue and continue to help so hey that's a piece of good news that i could use anyway um so this kind of study like i just played uh, can is it's hard. <laughs> it's really hard. Uh, but that's the point. That's the point. That's kind of the whole point of my whole trumpet mania thing, right? Is writing stuff that's really advanced. And you know, I uh, it's something to if you can't play, you know, if you're in the book, you know, looking at these studies. I mean, yeah, there are a lot of them. They're ridiculous. You know, written up to double high C and stuff. Uh, you know, newsflash. I can't play all of them. I really can't. But it's something to strive for, right? It's like when I listen to, uh, you know, Gazo playing uh, Backing Up Sinatra or, you know, any great principal slash lead trumpet player. You know, that's just something to strive for. You know, one of the great lead players of all time, frankly, is Bud Erseth. You know, Adolf, Adolf Erseth sat in that principal trumpet chair in the Chicago Symphony, one of the world's great orchestras. He sat in that principal trumpet chair like, didn't just sit in it. He owned that chair for over 50 years. I mean, listen to, if you want to hear some of the greatest, most commanding trumpet you'll ever hear, find the old Fritz Reiner, uh, 1960, I think, around around then. There's some great, I think RCA Victor was the label. And they did all sorts of, they did Bartok Concerto for Orchestra, but the Pines of Rome, Pines of Rome and Fountains of Rome, if you could find that record. Oh my God, there's stuff that Bud plays in there. He just like, it's like, come on, guys, I got you. He's like leading the whole thing, right? Just leading the charge. It's astounding, you know. Um, so just thinking a little bit more, you know, philosophically about lead trumpet playing. Yeah, command and, you know, you are the, the field general, if you will, right? Um, those are the best lead players. Bud Herseth, one of the very great lead players of all time. Um you know, if I could combine Bud Herseth with Snooky and throw in some gauze, you know, that's a that's a pretty good mix. I like to I like to think, right? It's just uh but that level of command and control, that's what I'm talking about. And obviously there's a lot of other things, the level of musicianship, all these things. Uh the one thing at a time, right? I'm talking about lead trumpet command and so therefore talking about accuracy because man that's going to help you get there if you can get your accuracy where um if you can get the accuracy uh you know improved for your own playing um as a young player i struggled with accuracy quite a lot i really did you know i could go for notes i could play real loud. i had chops i built up chops real quickly as a as a youngster and uh eh, not so accurate i remember playing that uh Oh, I forget the uh, Billy Byers chart of all of me. Uh, the Basie band played for years. And that, that intro, right? Well, Basie didn't play the intro, but it's on the chart. Okay, well, that, you know, when I was, like I say, a youngster was not quite so locked in um it helps that i have a really strong sense of d that d uh you know just above high c um i have a really firm grasp of that note helps right um a really tricky note for well for any trumpet player the notes between g top of the staff and high c i think that i find that register to be particularly wonky it's sort of a 
transitioning from more mid-register to upper register. To me, the upper register really begins above high C, okay? Then where you can legitimately say, yes, you're in the upper register now. Um, but those notes between G and high C are tricky. Um, some horns, obviously equipment, you know, can play a factor in this. But man, I am so not into, oh, I have this issue. Let's go. I need a new trumpet. No, you need to fucking practice, son. That's what you need to do. You need to practice. Um, don't go buy a new horn. Don't go buy a new mouthpiece. You know, uh, practice. You need to die. You need to sit in a room and bang away at this thing and, you know, until you suck a little less. That's how I always kind of looked at, looked at it, right? <laughs> Just, you practice, you suck, you practice, and after enough time, you suck a little less. That's, that's the, you know, to me, that's the philosophy. Um, <clears throat> the note between uh, G and C that for years gave me lots of trouble was B, right? Just below high C, right? It's just, it's almost there, but not quite. And it feels just a little different than high C, okay? So if I think, let's use this as an example, okay? Of thinking mechanically, like I was saying before. It's okay to think mechanically sometimes, just for the sake of making an accurate entrance, okay? Now, we can talk about all the music, you know, musicianship aspects in a moment, but let's, I'm kind of trying to strip it away to its bare element, which is, let's think mechanically about where where we're going for, what we're going for, okay? What does a B feel like, okay? I've got a lot more support from my bottom, you know, bottom set from my jaw, okay, than I would say the octave below, right? So, that's what a note, that's what that note feels like to me, okay? Not playing it, but I'm just sort of setting up for it, sort of, you know, a dry run, if you will, okay? Now, let's add in See if I can get close to the pitch. Oh, I was so wrong. <laughs> I think I was. I think I was on B flat. So okay, I still have work to do. Um. So that note, I have a story about that note. Um, that note has given me issues over the years. I've practiced it a lot. Um, when I went on the road for the first time with a Broadway style show, I went out with Dirty Dancing for the better part of two years I was out. And sure enough, I get the book ahead of time. And what's the first freaking lick? What does it start on? A B. Um, it had this. only played it like 500 times uh it's amazing what what slips away right when we don't do this every day so anyway it's coming back it's coming back my apologies for the clamato drinking the clamato again so this is why we practice right anyway um some good studies for working on your accuracy um are good to aid you in your lead trumpet goals, right? You want to say you want to play first trumpet, you want to be a lead player, well, you better have some, you better have your accuracy game because, you know, up pretty high because, you know, there's a lot of trumpet players who can play very loud, who can play very high, but combining that with pinpoint accuracy, okay, that ups the ante, if you will, okay, that starts to separate you from the crowd. It really does. If you can do this thing with the right style, um, with the right excitement, with the right level of command, um, it has to be accurate. It just has to be. You know, nobody wants to hear slop coming from the lead trumpet chair, of all things. Because, you know, the lead trumpet, say you're in a, you know, pops orchestra, um, you know, playing a playing back in somebody, singer or somebody, okay? Um you know, I've played lots of them over the years, uh, going back to the mid '90s, back to Rosemary Clooney. Okay, she had basically it was a lot of big band stuff, um, 
And Lou Rawls was another one. Had a big orchestra book. Um, and some commanding lead trumpet parts. I mean, some real blowing, right? Um, forgot where I was going with that. But, you know, the, 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 the point is, you have to sit there and feel like you own it. Okay, it has, that's, what, that's what it should sound like. Like you own it, okay? Um, and as a young player coming up, you know, I used to really sweat that aspect of getting to sit in the chair. Because I got to sit in the chair pretty young, 22, 23. I started, you know, play, I'm talking about playing gay. I'm not talking about playing college uh, band, uh, which was a good, play, good you know, avenue to practice this kind of stuff, the groups I played in in college. But doing it for real in the, quote, real world, right? I was out with Glenn Miller Orchestra, 92. I was not quite 23 years old. Um, and, you know, yeah, I had a lot of confidence. I'd played a million hours of, of trumpet. But being able to really command things, okay? Um, it's, you know, you have to kind of fake it till you make it a little bit. Uh, and that's okay, you know. But again, it's okay to think... It's okay to think mechanically at first, okay? You don't really want to play that way, obviously, right? You don't want to do that. Um, because who wants to hear that? Um, the musicianship part of it, right? The style, the vibrato, uh, just the overall just thing. You know, look at a, you know, a cat like Gazzo, my favorite, one of the most commanding things, right? the world on a string i'm not again i ain't 100 percent. i'm not sitting here um uh, saying i am um but you know just that being able to play with that level of confidence man wow you will wow a lot of people with that um oh i know where i was going with my other thought was that you know playing first trumpet lead trumpet in an orchestra like you know i did with rosemary clooney and lou rawls and all that you know, you are the sort of the field general, if you will, right? You're who people are supposed to sort of listen back to as far as pitch, um, how we're phrasing, you know, where cutoffs, um, are we putting breaks between, you know, held notes, you know, all sorts of little details. Well, first trumpet is who you're supposed to listen back to. And, you know, yeah, you don't want to, the, you know, unfortunately, you know, it can lead to a lot of ego <laughs> Ego taking over. You gonna play it how I'm gonna play it, man. You know, don't do that shit. You know, don't be that guy. Don't be that person. Um, <clears throat> it's basically, it's just for simplicity's sake. For the sake of the ensemble, you know, there's never enough rehearsal time. So listen back. If you have any question about where the cutoffs are or how we're playing this or that, listen for your lead trumpet player. One of the best things I ever heard about, you know, command was from Gary Foster, who was a woodwind doubler in L.A., uh, for many years, I did a concert with him several years ago, and he talked about playing in a studio orchestra um, and also in Toshiko Akiyoshi's band with the great Bobby Shu on lead trumpet. And he said it was this feeling of like, come on, guys, <laughs> it's this way. You know, you want it to feel like there's literally no other conceivable way to even play that that lick or this lick or whatever. Um, yeah, command, right? Command. Build up your accuracy. Um, work on your accuracy as a trumpet player. Um, muscles, ears. Muscles and ears. Those are the two big parts of the equation in my book. Um, so, as I always do, let's... Uh, how about another... Uh, okay, I got a good one. Here's another lick. Obviously from the Sinatra era. Um Starts on a D flat, right? Talk about accuracy. That's a tricky one. Hey, let's real quick, let's try a thing. Let's see if I can pick that note off, right? Mm, I think it's the bitch. Ooh, it's close. Okay. All right, so... Yeah, I hear it. 
Fessy. <laughs> anyway, chops are coming back. Feeling better. Feeling better. Things are improving. Uh, I'm not 100%. Uh, but I wanted to talk about some of these types of things today. Uh, hope y'all are doing okay. I'm sure loving having baseball back, so that makes me a happy man. And coming to hang out with you guys. Um, thank you so much for checking it out, man. It's a pleasure to spend a little time with y'all. And I appreciate you guys kind of going with this longer form business. Um, I feel like I can't really say it all in two minutes anymore. Just too, gotten too long, <laughs> too full of hot air, I guess. Anyway, that's enough for now. But uh, thanks again for checking it out. Do you like it? Want to subscribe? Hit the smash that subscribe button. <laughs> okay, see you guys around.